What's up everyone, it's TV, and we're back in PetSim 99 to talk about how to get you really far in these chest raids. As you know, the current PetSim 99 clan battle is all about chest raids. You get two raids per day that you can do. And even if you're not participating in clan battles, you can still get a lot of loot. And the further you go in the raid, obviously the more loot you're gonna get. And I'm about to push it even further. I should be able to get about 75 to 80 in my next run based on some tips from a lot of great people. So huge shout out to Arwen Rocks who shared a ton of these tips. And I'm I'm about to share with you. He's an awesome creator and also one of the richest players in the game. I believe he's still on the like top RAP leaderboard. I think he was number one or so. I haven't looked in a while because I'm just going to get jealous. Okay. Also shout out to Sizzles Jelly Queen, who is about to release a similar video to this one. So make sure you go and subscribe to her. That way you don't miss out on her tips video because she's going to have some stuff that I'm not going to have. All right. So she gave some tips for this as well. So just keep that in mind. So again, whether you're participating in this clan battle or not, these are going to be pretty helpful for you in general. I think even if you just want to up your game for damage, this should help you a ton. So again, with the chest raise, there's only two per day that you can do. So the first one's at 12 p.m. Central time. The second one is 10 p.m. Central. So I'm not going to try to convert your time zone for you. You're going to have to figure that one out yourself. You should probably know it by now. So obviously you want to equip your best pets here. I see a lot of people are making the mistake of including exclusives in their builds. So if you're including 85 percenters, 90 percenters, or even 95 percenters, make sure they're rainbow or shiny or just take them out of your teams because those are not going to help you at all with damage, all right? So you need to make sure you have the right pets in here. Obviously, huges are going to be best. Golden huges are next. Shiny huges are great. Rainbow huges, amazing. And then obviously, the best huge you can have are going to be rainbow shiny huges. Those are going to make the most damage, especially if you can level them up. And then, of course, you know, if you have any titanics and instead of those exclusives that aren't, you know, special, if they're not shiny, they're not rainbow or shiny rainbows, you're going to want to put in your highest damaging stat pets instead. So if your best pets are going to be rainbow yetis, just put in as many of those as you can. After your pets are equipped, make sure you eat some fruit. So the only fruits you truly need for these raid battles, although I like to have all of them, I just literally use all of them. It's going to be apple and then rainbow fruit. Those are the two fruits you really, really need. Orange, pineapple, banana, and candy canes aren't the greatest of fruits. So I know I said candy cane is a fruit. That's correct. It is considered a fruit. I don't know why, but the game considers it. It's, it's basically a fruit. Okay. The only ones you really need are apple and rainbow. The others are just for farm stats. So like better diamonds, you know, more coins and such and as well as like increased uh, i think drop rates so you can eat them or not of course you want your toys so you want the toy bones you want the toy ball and then you want the uh rubber ducky those are just going to give you you know faster speed for your pets which is great and then um you obviously want your best potion so you only really need the damage potion for this but you're also going to want to have like treasure hunt just so you can have better drops because it's not just about damage right it's also about getting stuff and then finally you want to make sure you have the speed potion because that's going to help your pets quite a bit Oh yeah, I totally forgot I do use the cocktail. Make sure you at least run one cocktail before each run. It will give you more damage. And then another stat that's helpful is I have, you know, clan level five. So if you're in a clan, make sure your clan is maxed out, at least on the damage side. You know, there's a nice perk in there for drop rates as well, but you really just want to make sure you have that damage upgrade. The next thing to remember is to make sure you switch your enchants over to the right build. Now there's a whole variety of builds I can show you for this, but I'm just going to tell you, this is the build that I like to use. Everything you do should be tier eights. So if you don't have the proper enchant levels for that, make sure you just focus on building that up to, you know, finally at least be able to equip tier eights. You don't need to be able to craft them, but you do need to be able to equip them. What you're seeing here is I'm using two chest breakers. I'm using three tap damage, and then I have two critical tier eights, and then I've got a firework and a super lightning. Chest breaker has a zero effect to super lightning or firework, so it doesn't matter if you don't have them. Those are going to be really powerful still with even without chest breaker. Chest breaker does affect pet damage, and it also does affect your taps. So when you have three tap enchants and then you got two chest breakers, they're really stacking with each other really well. You're getting way more power every tap you make. Tap damage, I have noticed to be the best way to damage chests in general. Like you can pretty much go in without pets with these for the most part until a little bit later. Chest breaker does stack with each other really well. So if you're going to have like a third one, it's going to be really, really powerful. Same with tap damage. I am switching out firework pretty soon with a third chest breaker. So in a little bit for the next raid, I should be able to finally get to room 80 um, just with this third chest breaker. Super lightning and firework are really great. Um, the reason why I don't use two super lightnings is it doesn't really increase the rate of fire currently. And based on my tests, I'm only seeing one super lightning trigger per second. And with the second super lightning, it didn't increase the rate of fire. So with two super lightning, you're still only getting one attack. So that was kind of, you know, pointless. Fireworks had the second most damage compared to super lightning. And then the third one was just a regular lightning, which was about, I, I would say almost like half of super lightning. Now, chestbreaker does 
not stack at all or affect super lightning or the fireworks enchant for some reason i don't know why but uh, it does affect all your tap damage your criticals and your pet damage so that's going to be really important for you you want to make sure you get chest breaker as soon as you can it's going to make a big difference in your runs and progress in rooms even more so than getting titanic taps do so much more damage than your pets so you really want to focus on upping your game for taps you also want to make sure you have an auto clicker if you're going to be playing i i know mobile players if mobile players you should be able to create some uh like a limited macro for tapping very quickly i know that uh ios has a recipe system for you know auto clicking very quickly i know it's limited i think you still have to tap to get it you know to actually work and that it doesn't like infinitely loop but you can at least speed up your taps that way so make sure you look into recipes for ios android has some uh, i think auto clicking abilities as well so just make sure you look into that the best speed for your auto clicker should be one millisecond i have tried 10 millisecond and i've also tried 100 millisecond 10 millisecond is a lot slower than one millisecond it does make a big difference surprisingly the game does operate a little better if you have it at one millisecond per click now, if you cannot afford three chest breakers, like I said, just get one. What I would say is get a maximum of four tap damage. It does still help. Uh, even at four tap damage, it does help a lot. I have noticed a difference. You can put strong pets in there if you really want to. I would say make sure you at least have, at a minimum, a super lightning, tap damage enchants, a fireworks. I like the criticals. It's proven time and time again to help damage quite a bit, even on taps. But tap enchants are going to be way more important. Before I had two chest breakers, I used four tap damage. And if I didn't have another chest breaker in here what i'd probably do is put uh, lightning in here or i would put a strong pets just to have it but this is a really good build the next thing you're going to want to do is equip a really good hoverboard um i'm told by sizzles to use a three star hoverboard so keep that in mind apparently it goes faster than the lower stars now some people were saying to use auto farm with a flag like a rainbow flag or shiny flag or even a pet strength flag inside the last zone and then you know make sure you hit auto farm and then go in, but I haven't noticed any kind of damage increase. Let me know in the comments below if you have seen a damage increase, but based on the stats that I was observing during my last run, I didn't see any kind of decline in damage as I was running through the zones compared to my previous run. So I could be wrong, but I didn't really see a huge impact. So keep that in mind. You know, I'll show you a little clip here of how I do it, but keep that in mind. You might be able to get more damage, but maybe you don't. Now, this next tip is from Arwen as well as Sizzles, and that is to use charms on your huges. The most practical charm to use is going to be strength. You can get those pretty cheaply. You can get a ton of them, and they do stack on your pet's damage. So get a bunch of strength charms, fill up your, all your huges with them, and that's going to be a decent route. Of course, if you're rich and you have a ton of money, you can use royalty charms instead. They're about seven to eight million each. So royalty is a good one. I don't like it because it's expensive. I kind of went with Arwen's advice and just went with the strength charms on mine and i still have some criticals that i have left over the nice thing though is we now have a hammer so if you have other you know charms in there like agility bonus or anything like that you can remove them with the hammer and they're cheap it does destroy the charm though so don't do this on royalty just make sure you get a chisel instead which does remove the charm and puts it back in your inventory if you want to keep it and finally, you really want to level up your enchant mastery. This is going to be huge because it does increase your enchant effectiveness. So if you want more damage for your chest breakers, you want more damage for, you know, critical, you want more damage for your tap damage, all that, even your, you know, lightning, it's going to be really important for you to level up your mastery for enchants, which is not easy. Max mastery on this is really, really powerful. You get 25% plus bonus on your enchants that's huge 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 and then of course uh you know even if you can get to level 90 that's 15 percent so keep that in mind you probably want to try to level that up i know it's expensive i know it's hard make sure you watch my mastery tips video that i just released the other day that's going to help you you know understand where to go for that but yeah masteries kind of important for this uh, potions not as important but masteries for enchant is especially if you want to be able to you know put in more damage so you can start moving up from maybe that 30 rooms i'm assuming you currently get about 30 rooms most people do when you want to push it up to like 50 to 60 you kind of need better pets you need to start maxing out your enchants and things like that so if you want to step it up more you'll have to do it that route Anyway, if this was helpful to you, please hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Also, go check out Arwen's channel as well as Sizzle's channel. I'll link both of them in the description below. I just got to say both have been super helpful, super open with sharing tips and hints. Stuff that most people, including myself, I'm guilty as charged. But a lot of people just don't like to share secrets like that because they don't want other you know, clans learning how to become really, really powerful in the battle. And I'm, I'm sure they have a few other tips, though, that they're not sharing. So keep an eye on Sizzle's video. She might share some stuff that I didn't even share. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next vid. Peace.